Uh, I've seen all the other shows, so here we go. I'm, this is the first time ever actually using PowerPoint with all the server management that yeah. I've ever actually used PowerPoint. Um, so, okay, embedded RFID. Oh, yeah, this thing's got a cool little laser point. Um, Emil Grafster, that's my name, it's Josh. Um, text groups, this is just kind of like, I was going to introduce myself, but it's kind of pointless now. But text groups is a, a company I've been working on uh, launching. About the same time that I got my chip implant, I started working on this company. And it's the, the whole chip media hype is, is kind of slowing me down. So we're launching in, in uh, uh, this, oh yeah, I see what you're saying. It's kind of nutty. Um, so here it is, the idea, you know, basically, whatever. You, it's a group group messaging thing. Rob here sends in text groups, it goes to everybody. Um, we're launching in Canada in 30 days, states in uh, probably three or four months. Uh, we're looking for people with brains, heart, and dice full money. <laughs> so, I'm tinkering. Uh, so I've always kind of been, uh, you know, a tinker, uh, just got involved in electronics, and uh, I'm really glad to meet Bill B, and uh, uh, got the internet and stuff online for years and years. And uh, so RFID, you know, tinkering might be the RFID. So here's that $30, $40 reader for Parallax. Um, different size tags. This is like the, you know, bull line tag. <laughs> Nobody would ever get. But that's like a six inch read range right there. That's what you get. Um, this one is the one that I have in my left hand. It's three by 13 millimeters. Um, and it has a three inch read range, maybe. Um, this is the one that Phil just got. It's two by 12 and it fits in the, uh, in the needle. Um, this is some stuff, kits that are available. Uh, this is a USB reader that's available um, from physicsusa.com. Different types of tags, different types of cards. This is uh, 125 kilohertz, low frequency, uh, high frequency. Can't really tell the difference part. Um, I wrote a book, RFID Toys. Uh, covers, you know, quick overview of RFID, um, you know, mental uh, strikes and head bolts and just a whole bunch of stuff that kind of show how to build the, the you know, front door access and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I got some, like, like 15 of them in the back, if anybody wants one. So that led me to the uh, speaking door Great. Uh, embedding RFID into hardware. Um, take a, a regular electronic safe, which was way too heavy to love here. Um, you know, rip the face off, put some put some stuff in behind it, um, and enable it with RFID. So press the button, scan the hand or the or the tag, and uh, get in. So essentially, some of the issues around this are actually the metal from the from the actual safe interferes a little bit. But uh, there being just about a half inch between the metal plate on the safe and the uh, reader, there's like a half inch here, um, it's just enough, and it, it works. So if someone cut off your hand, do you think Yeah, if someone cut off my hand, actually it's funny, because it always comes up, but the, the <laughs> fact is, it, it's good, because uh, I, I tell the story about a guy in Korea who had an $80,000 car, but it had biometrics, so he had to have his thumb uh, to start the car, and car thieves said, give me your car. And he's like, all right, here you go. And they couldn't, couldn't drive off with it. So they said, well, what's the deal? Oh, I need to do my thumb. So I said, we'll do it. So we did it. And then they threw him in the trunk. And so they drove around, and then they ran out of gas, went to the gas station, got some gas, got back in the car, couldn't start. They're like, oh, man, get that guy out of the trunk. So they got the guy out of the trunk, they started the car, and they said, screw this guy, let's take his thumb. So they cut off his thumb. Uh, pretty, pretty nasty. But the thing is, I mean, if somebody wanted into my car, into my safe, or whatever, I'd either give them the pin code to the safe, or if they were really adamant about coming after my hand, I'd bite it out and spit it out. Because uh, it's just under the skin, it's not, it's not a huge deal. So, um, <laughs> you know, I can get a band-aid, I can't get a replacement hand. Um, so, uh, the other thing, you know, these are the projects that are in the book too. So, uh, you know, uh, Microsoft Elite, keyboard, USB, uh, take it apart, put a USB hub in there and a reader, uh, the wrist rest section, put it back together, and uh, you never know the difference, and then you can use uh, the gene replacement for uh, logging. So, that you can into people. Right? Uh, there's my left and right hand, of course, you already know all this by now. Um, you know, EM4102 and high tag, which is 134 kilohertz. Um, left hand, all the good information. Um, there it is, that's the proposed um, you know, cell phone camera shot uh, the day before, and uh, the goods, and you just saw this, so it's kind of pointless. Um, there it is, uh, using it the same, same day. Uh, that's after, that's like a day or two after, uh, and that was done again with a scalpel, so, because uh, it was a little larger, it was 3 by 13. Uh, so that's like a day after, and that's today. So a little bit of a scar right there. Um, right hand, full of high tag, uh, 134 kilohertz, all the good stuff. Uh, there's a proposed location, 
Um, you've seen it, and this is a movie, but again, kind of pointless. Um, hopefully it's going to move on without too much fuss. Um, there's the day, or actually right after, um, and then today, a little scared, or a little scared. Um, daily life, I used to get into my front door, <coughs> into my car, and log into the computer. Security issues. Um, not secure at all. It could be read by anyone. And, uh, you know, that's, <coughs> that's the issue. But uh, most RFID tags are not designed sign of security mind. There are these things that be read the standard reader, and that leaves systems that utilize these tags vulnerable to cloning and replay attacks. Um, so the severity of the security issues depend on the context in which these devices are used. So um, you're looking at a business use where it's high risk, uh, random attacks, uh, basically things like payment systems, high security access, medical records, all the things that Veritchip is pushing their product for. Um, you know, the, the issue is common design. Um, you know, if someone were to take my ID, uh, you know, basically at this point, they couldn't do anything with it except for get into my house and in my car and log into my computer. Um, so, and, you know, then again, essentially that's low risk targeted attack. They'd have to know me. They'd have to, you know, want to get into my particular house. So, there's a lot easier ways to get in. Um, in a business case, it could be random. Like you could just sit down next to a number of random people. That, People that use uh, ExxonMobil's speed pass. Um, if you could read that and then emulate it, it doesn't matter who you are. I can go to you know any gas station and get gas with your pay pass. So um, the issue is depends on you know the context in which it's used. Um, it's funny because I was just talking about these kind of um, contextual security issues, and then my car was broken into. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, of course. Breaking the window, uh, one, of the, one of the easier options than sneaking up on me and getting my chip. Uh, you didn't even take anything, you know? You didn't even take nothing. I was like, the reader? Yeah, no, I didn't steal the reader, didn't know nothing. So, stereo is there? I don't know. Maybe my stuff's not good enough. Uh, so, there are RFID tags that are cryptographically secure. Um, you know, speed pay, or speed, yeah, speed pass. And then the DSP tag uh, used in common car keys and stuff like that. Um, a 40 bit cryptographic key, it emits a, an identifier and then authentic, authenticates the reader through a challenge response mechanism. Um, Excellent level speed pads, right? Used in uh, you know, McDonald's and all the stuff you've seen. So here it is, glass broken. Um, they tried to remove it and broke it. I don't know why they use a glass tag inside this thing, but who knows? Um, probably just because it was there. Um, dudes over at rfdanalysis.org, John Hopkins University. So put some uh, FPGAs together, uh, and then a 16-unit array cracked five DST tags in under two hours. Uh, so the issue isn't that they cracked five DST tags in two hours. The issue is that with those five cracked tags, they were able to derive the algorithm used by the common system, the standard system. So then once they have the algorithm, uh, uh, you know, instantly, somebody sits down next to them, they grab it, crack it, it's done, they instantly have it. Um, so business use, again, equals common system. Uh, so they, let's go back, back. Uh, so they came up with this little thing. Uh, this is one of the FPGAs. It's not even necessary to be used with their laptop scenario. This is just a, um, a simple little uh, coil antenna, uh, some stuff that's a little circuitry and whatnot, some software, um, and they put it in a, you know, they put it, there's this guy sitting here, they did this little movie. Um, he's just sitting here, his bag is here, and it's got a, a, the antenna. This dude, you know, unwary, random dude on the train or whatever, sits down next to him with keys in the pocket. Speed pass is grabbed within, you know, an instant. Uh, stealing cars, stealing gas. Um, they just take, you know, any of these any of these types of applications, you know, and, and with these uh, tags they've got, they can emulate them to right, walk right up to the gas pump and pay for gas with some of these random stuff. So, not too cool, but um, <clears throat> at least Speed pass, they try to uh, uh, do some, and that's, that's good. Uh, so, implant security, you know, implants are uh, in your body, so the issue is, you know, recall is a lot more difficult. Um,